sort of sounds we usually use um, are electronic sounds of various sorts and also sounds that are recorded uh, picked up by a microphone, everyday sounds, and also musical instruments. Alright, the list one, which I don't know how that relates to different ones mm-hmm. of the different synchronistic things. Like, I, was, I don't know, but it's, it's been a while since I'd visited that, but it's been cool kind of revisiting it since seeing you post some things, but I haven't really quite, like, dug into... Yeah. This stuff again but that was something that like because one thing that always kind of struck me was the whole idea of the the joints and fingers i was like well that seems pretty reasonable like the, that there might be some cosmic connection with our fingers and joints yeah and uh like that. I mean, there's 13 moons in the year you know and then like these turtles i from what i'd remembered was that like there's certain tur- tortoises that they i think they all have the 13 in the middle uh-huh. I think certain species maybe have the 20 or maybe it's... Yeah, I'm not sure. I thought that was cool, though, so I brought that up to him. But it's uh, it's been a little while. For sure. And um, you, you know, what, that, that's kind what, of the interesting thing is, like, uh, similar, like, a long uh, time ago, like, I first read um, something beyond, beyond um, technology or whatever, the Mayan something by um, Jose. Sure. Okay, and I read that one, and that that was like when I was in my twenties. I'm, I'm I'm like uh, my late thirties now, and so I read like yeah, that, and I read like a bunch of other stuff, you know. And so like it was like something that I always was like, oh, um, that I read, and I always was like in in my like back of my head it was like, oh, I wish I had more time to like maybe actually do it <laughs> instead of just like read it, like actually like do the count. Yeah actually like reflect every day and actually like you know because like one time around that time too i was reading um the art of dreaming and then i read this yeah. this other book uh toltec dreaming and so i started to do um some of the stuff you know like in in the art of dreaming it tells you to like um look at your hands and then like then from there you do other things and then like um also yeah. too when you're dreaming like in your house, there like are different areas that are better or, or worse for for different type of stuff, and I started to do that, and I and I started to like realize, you know, like different areas of the house. Like there's this one area of the house that I do not sleep anymore because that's the always like the the area where like I I remember one time I I forgot and I I took a nap there, and then I like <laughs> it was like one of those like sleep paralysis dreams and like. Oh shit! Like all this like weird stuff happened. I was like, ah, I forgot. Don't sleep in that area. And it, like it was kind of weird. And so, uh, but anyways, uh, you know, there's like it's interesting things about like that are um, cool to explore. And so, anyways, speed up to to now. Um, actually, I think Mandala narrative came out of like a a miscommunication between me and John like early on when we were chatting like. I like assumed something and he assumed something of me uh, and then we're like oh yeah Mandela narrative and then we just and then so like later I start to be like okay I like how that sounds and then I'm like what does that mean and I've been beginning to like scratch at that and then I started to tie in the Mayan thing because I was like okay I need something that I've always kind of like liked and already know but like I, I always wanted to like just like that dreaming thing like do and so I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna actually like do the do the mind count like every day, and like you know actually give space and time for it, and just see you know similarly to like the art of dreaming is like you know explore it, and it's been cool to um, just like what I, I posted today use language to expand the frequency of of like what 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 I could um, express and even explore because like doing the, the mind count early on I had this weird dream of. Uh, a co- uh, no, not uh, a Kuga Khan, <laughs> and he was like this yeah. like feather serpent, but it was like the wind, which yeah. t- today is the wind, and it was like, but it was like you know, like on on sh- uh, on any psychedelics, like uh, the patterns in the like the fabric of reality. So it was like this wind, but it was like this uh, entity within the fabric of reality, like dancing and like yeah. communicating to me. <laughs> <laughs> this was like early on when I was doing it. I was like, okay, 
This is cool. <laughs> I, I, I can explore nice. this. This is like a good energy of like getting that creative energy to to uh, do stuff. Like early on, we talk about like noise. You know, like the noise of everyday life. Be like a like a dream eater. Like suck away <laughs> your dreams sure. and and uh, make it hard to either um, be creative in your thoughts. Like you know, playing in in your thoughts. That's what like imaginarium for me means. And then um, also too, like actually like dreaming. And I think that's what I, uh, more that I want to like dig into is like dream logic and um, exploring uh, a little bit of like the weird trickster stuff. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Oh, that trickster man, <laughs> he gets in there. I like that whole Mandala narrative, happy accident. Yeah, yeah. Thing. Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> That was one of those very long-running, unfinished projects. I have, I had this concept album idea, and I, it was going to be all multimedia. And I thought of a poster for it. it was very mm -hmm. mandala like It was yeah. to have like elements from all the songs, but integrated. And um, uh. I was telling a story about that, and I, th I think that's where you started describing what like how in in your mind's eye what what i was talking about which i, I didn't know what i was talking about like i'm i'm not a disciplined artist <laughs> i just get these ideas but um i i really like the balloon game mindset sensibility it's effective and i'm almost like too sensitive to it or whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. but and, and this is where I get a little bit new agey, nerdy with it. But in my birth chart, I have Mercury, Venus, the sun and the moon all packed together in the seventh house, in the sign of Aries. And then the sun and the moon are across from Pluto. So that's sort of my introverted side as I see it in Mars and Taurus. And I see all that as like balancing against this weird tendency to extroversion. Like very few people who know me would call me convivial or very extroverted, but there is something about me that like craves that sense of engagement, which um, I, 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 it reminds me of that, that clown bitch, I guess. I was just reading that the article that pertained to that like uh, the, the circus that I've, I've sort of played with that from from a young age. I, I wrote this story where a kid runs off to join the circus and like has a breakdown in the ring and gets new nickname. Yeah, that, that was after reading Kafka, I guess. You, you, you expose yourself to styles, then you can combine them and play around with them. I didn't have the discipline to keep reading. The worst mistake I ever made was I allowed myself to just let that fade away. And then like my whole uh, trajectory, uh, moving out of my high school hometown to go to college, get out of my parents' house and um, started, you know, quote, unquote, finding myself instead. And um, here we are <laughs> having found one another. Yeah. You know, uh, it's kind of funny. I guess I have a slightly similar but opposite story of where I, in high school I was in a technical school and my major was computer science. At the end, it was like it was like a senior year. It, there was like a revolt in computer science because like a lot of us were failing. But it was like the only class that we were failing. We were all like doing really good in other other classes, but like. I don't know. It, it was like they gave us an impossible task to like program like this Tetris game, and I don't know. It was just like all, all of us failed and it really messed us up. And anyways, me and three of us, we did this video and we did a spoof of uh, Office Space, you know, where they beat up the the fax machine, but we beat up a monitor, hey. and, and it's called Real Programming G's. <laughs> and it's funny. My friend edited, it and I remember that was like the first time. Because we do it, and we did it. Okay, we were both. We're all of us were the camera person, and then 
it just so happened that this guy walking with his kid were taking a hike where we were filming and he became the third uh camera guy to like pan to like do the final scene or whatever and i just remember it like even his kid is like in the background in the in, in the scene and if it wasn't for him it like the thing wouldn't have came came together but i remember cool. when we were filming it and my friend was telling me about it i'm like i don't see this coming together and then i remember him like editing it and then i remember him th- uh, giving me one of the video edits and i'm like holy shit that's pretty good <laughs> and then um, that was like the first time I ever did it, like create uh, like a media like that or whatever. But it was funny because we were frustrated with uh, fucking uh, our, our computer science. And so like after that, I was like, fuck computer science. And I basically, uh, you know, narratively became a Dharma bum. Like I, I would I would like even even in college ditch class and, and go and read like uh, Jack Kerouac and Willow Miss Burroughs and Allen Ginsberg and the acid yeah. test and all that kind of stuff. Like I would like even be like, okay, I could ditch this lecture. Like I'm already caught up on all the reading. Like I just need to do good on the test and then I'll go in the library and, and read all these books. And then I was like, then, uh, in my own head, I, I like always like, I'm, I'm, I'm a Dharma bum. Cause I really like that book. <laughs> yeah. And then it's, it's funny now, to see my life like I'm coming back to like um, not even like using what I learned like programming but like just as using that as a model to like express and even play around with stuff in in a different way and and even too to like um, I remember early on one of the first actually the first uh, talk I heard Douglas Rushkoff he was there actually I was there to listen to um, Daniel Pinchback and he was talking about 2012 and the yeah. calendar and shit. Oh, shit. Was that, was that in Berkeley? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. I lo- there, did you... Someone uploaded the video from that, and that used to be, like, what I'd showed people as, like, one of my, like, introductions to Douglas Rushkoff. Yeah. And, like, kind of in opposition to the 2012... Kind of quasi-hysteria of pre-2012, or, like, just... I, not, yeah. I wouldn't say hysteria, but, like, the perhaps overblown idea that something the, huge the is going to happen. Kind of like but... the, the kind of mythical or like uh, fantastic thinking of it. But yeah. anyways, like that's what I, I, I went there to, to listen to uh, Pinchbeck talk. And I remember it was like halfway through, but there's like a portion where Doug's like, ah, oh, yeah, whatever. And then he starts talking about the Bible and going back into like the old testament and like d- decoding that and that as like source code and just him like talking about that and i'm like okay i could see that and just like like thinking about it in, in that meta sense but using a, a analogy and and a, a language that I, I that i could use too um like the model <laughs> that i i use in my own head to like reorganize and, and think about stuff too um, you mean the myth yeah. of christianity or I mean, the Bible, or uh, was yeah. this uh, with like, the programming? Yeah, like like it's source code for civilization. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you look through it and see like the you know the beginning of the word, you know, like sort of they're at being esoteric knowledge kind of within this thing that most people see up or take more directly, kind of like that. Yeah, I, I don't know, like because I haven't studied it too much, but I felt like. I feel like I remember some of the points he's made. But yeah, so, so it was kind of funny. Yeah, Ever since then, I was like, okay, I stopped like reading or even like. But it, it, it was just more that like, okay, I got into Rushkoff because of that talk, and um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a lot more um, useful to to use like you know the stuff that he's doing. I found like the same thing too, like which is kind of interesting. Even though I I love. Um, Terrence McKenna and he, his voice too is so easy to use in mm-hmm. a video edit. Yeah. But uh, yeah. for my own research, well, and, yeah, my own research and study <laughs> is like I prefer Robert Anton Wilson, and I think it's like a, a lot yeah. of similar. The the language is a lot more stripped down, but it's a lot more useful. Sometimes there's like less certainty is required from people talking about something. So oh yeah, like, yeah, maybe logic is like, very you don't important. Want, yeah. 